Well, hello. Um, we're in Stronghold today and we are looking at different types of shoes. So have a think about maybe buying your first pair of shoes or even changing up. So from your beginner shoes, moving up to an intermediate pair of shoes or an advanced pair of shoes. Um, but with so many different things out there, we thought we might take you through step by step a little bit about the different types of shoes that you can buy, uh, different styles, different rubbers, and then also trying to relate that to what you actually want to do um, in terms of your climbing, whether you're an indoor climber, outdoor boulderer, or whether you're climbing on gritstone a lot or doing track. So first off, let's start um, at the beginning. So a lot of entry level shoes tend to be made to be comfortable. Um, so for that, they tend to have either just a nice rounded toe. So I don't know if you can see here, it's quite, quite flat, quite level so that when your foot's in it, it is not pushing your toes out of shape. It's actually nice and comfortable to stay in all day. Um, so the benefit of that is you can have your foot inside the shoe for as long as you need to be um, or without causing too much pain. The downside of it is it is an entry level shoe so the rubber, the, the shape of the shoe means it won't hold on to tiny little holes as well. It might be quite good for smearing, might be good for sort of the bigger jugs, the bigger footholds but if you want to progress upwards to a slightly more technical terrain then you might be looking at something a little bit different but <clears throat> entry level shoes tend to be that nice rounded, have that rounded toe box to them um, with not much of an aggressive downturn there. Another example of a sort of fairly entry level shoe as well, it's starting to have a little bit of asymmetry to the toe here but again it's not it's not too off-centred, um, so would give quite a comfortable fit to the shoe there. So sticking with the, the toe box and the toe shape, um, one big tell comparing sort of a beginner entry-level shoe to an intermediate shoe is definitely the shape of the, the toe itself. So for instance, like we were saying, this one's got very rounded toe shape to it. A sort of good intermediate shoe that you might go for will tend to have an offset toe so you can see the difference here, hold these up, where the toe box is sort of directed over the big toe a little bit more, whereas this one here is more towards the front, sort of in between toes really. So you don't get as much power and as much drive with this as you do with this one here. So this one, because it's, it's off-centered and the main point is directed over the big toe, it means you can get a lot more power driving towards, um, downwards into, into your foot really. So it gives you a little bit more precision, a little bit more power when you are standing on something a little bit smaller. So that's where the, the intermediate level um, starts to come in with the shoes. Moving up the scale a little bit to slightly more advanced shoes, things that might start changing um, will be different features. So it'll still have that slight aggressive downturn to it for steeper terrain. So the assumption is that a more advanced level shoe will be for people who are climbing overhanging stuff, steeper stuff, so they'll need that extra grip power with their toe by having an aggressive downturn. Other things that, that you might start featuring into will be things like the, the rubber on the top of the toe box, so for toe hooking, and also what kind of heel cup you get as well. So for a beginner entry level shoe, you won't get much of a, a heel, you get something, you get a, a little token bit of rubber but it's actually quite soft, quite flexible. So when you do come to heel hook on things, it is not that great, it's gonna slip off a little bit. Um, intermediate, get a slightly thicker bit of rubber, so a thicker pad there. You can see the difference there with the flexibility it starts to change up a little bit. So this one's a little bit more, a little bit more stiff. So it gives you a bit more, a bit more holding power when you have got a heel hook. But then compare it again to going up another step, you've got, well, the solution is, is a good bouldering shoe. It's got an all-round heel cup to it, um, so you can sort of heel hook to the sides as well, rather than just on the back end of the heel there. So that's just thinking about a few features to do with beginner shoes, the toe box shape, moving up to intermediate, and finally up to probably the more advanced features, things that you're starting to think about, like maybe the toe, the rubber on the top of the toe, and what kind of shape the heel cup is. You can get shoes that have been designed specifically to be softer and some which will give a slightly more stiffened, um, stiffened sole. So for instance, the Anasazis, they brought out two different types, the pinks and the whites. Um, the pinks 
The Pinks have been designed to be a good intermediate all-round shoe. Um, so the rubber tends to be a little softer than the whites. So the whites is designed to be very crispy, very, very rigid, um, and it excels particularly on things like steep limestone. So that that edging ability and capability there means that it can get a lot more holding power on steeper terrain. Um, on the ledges as well, whereas the pink, because it's slightly softer rubber, will tend to tend to be better on things that are slightly more smeary. Um, so perhaps if you go onto gritstone, um, the rounded edges there. So it's worth considering the different kinds of rubber that you're going to you're going to be buying into. So it's not just the shape of the shoe, the different features on top of it, but also the actual rubber itself. Um, and one other thing that's out there on the market is it's the complete opposite end of the spectrum to the, the sharp downturn aggressive solutions. Sportiva came out with no edge technology. So this one here, it, it is a very soft shoe, but it excels in particular at um, the really soft, slabby, smeary types of climbs. Um, so Fontainebleau, being sandstone, has got a lot of those types of types of footholds, you know, where they've got a tiny little divot in the rock. Um, where something that's that aggressive just won't, won't actually stick, it'll actually sort of pop off rock. And this one here, the idea being that, you know, as you stand up on your, on your foot, you maintain the contact between the rubber and the foothold because it's got that, that no-edge technology there. So that's, that's also hiding in the bag sometimes, um, especially in places like Fontainebleau, where you've got that softer rock type. So thinking again about um, the, the style of climb that you might be doing, relating that to the rock as well. If you're primarily an outside climber, for instance, if you, you go bouldering an awful lot, then choose something that's, that's going to excel at bouldering. So something where you might have to keep taking your shoes off in between attempts. Um, if you're quite a hardy boulder, I would definitely recommend the solutions. They have been They've been my go-to shoe now for I don't know how many years, but they they excel at loads of overhanging terrain, very good bouldering, because bouldering you tend to throw in heels quite a lot, just from the nature of the style of climbing that you're doing. Um, if you're not bouldering, if you're doing more trad climbs, then I'd choose something that's definitely comfortable, because trad climbs take a lot longer than uh, than a boulder, you know, like a, a two-minute cruxy boulder. You're gonna be on a trad climb for I don't know, it depends how long it takes you to climb it, but it could be half an hour, 40 minutes, especially if you go into multi-pitch stuff as well. So, when I'm trad climbing, I do, do go for my comfortable pair of shoes. Um, I do prefer the katanas because I can lace them up and just adjust them as my foot swells throughout the day. But also I've got another pair for when I do multi-pitch climbs, um, when I'm in them for long periods of times, but they are slightly bigger as well, um, just so that I know my foot's going to swell over the course of the day. I've got hours on a climb. I go for a slightly bigger pair. Another thing as well when you're doing trad climb or, is to think about the stiffness of the shoe. And I think that is probably an important feature over many other features. Because when you're standing on a tiny little edge for maybe five, ten minutes at a time while you're trying to get your gear placement in, the stiffness of the shoe makes a huge difference as to how long you can actually stand there without having calf leg, calf muscle fatigue or foot fatigue. Um, there are companies that have invested in technology within, within the toe box itself, within the, the sole of the toe. Um, and Sportiva in particular have done that very well. So they've created something called the P3 platform. So you can see here, it's got a nice little curve to the toe and basically this section here, the ball of the foot, is actually actively drawn inwards into the foot, which means that you maintain your foot um, shape and keeping your toes downturned. So it keeps that aggression on the, on the toe box, on the actual toes of the shoe, throughout its lifetime. So these shoes have been worn, I don't know how many times a week, for all over a year now. And you can still see it's maintaining its shape compared to a fresh crispy pair. So these ones are practically new out the box. And there's not much difference in, in their actual shape of the toes themselves. So it's being maintained over the long term, whereas a different pair, which started off nice and crispy and aggressive, have actually become slightly more warped and, and the downturn has, has been lost over time. So that's another thing to consider perhaps is what sort of technology you're going to get that's going to keep your shoe in the same shape 
in the long run. One other feature to consider when you're, you're buying shoes is whether you want lace up, so just laces go all the way, or opt for a more sort of fast and ready Velcro version. Now I've had both over the years and I prefer Velcro when, when I'm bouldering because I can take my shoes on and off quite quickly if I've got in between attempts. Um, but the lace ups, I tend to prefer the lace ups when, when I'm going to be in the shoe for a little bit longer and know that the Velcro is not going to work its way undone. So, for instance, if I'm multi pitch climbing or doing trad routes, I'll wear lace ups. But it is, I think it is a, a, entirely a preference, a personal preference on whether you prefer lace ups or, or Velcro. If you're finding the shoe a little bit of a, a struggle to fit on your foot because you've got a slightly different foot shape from the norm, then Perhaps a lace up because you can adjust it a little bit better, um, so we give a bit more give in places and tighten it up in other places. So buying a pair of shoes, if it's your first pair of shoes, definitely go and try on loads and loads of shoes. And I think top of the list, top of the, the features list for you would be make it comfortable. Make sure it fits, make sure it's comfortable. If you're looking at something where you're perhaps going to be doing more outdoor stuff, maybe more trad, more sports stuff, or a good all-round shoe. Look for something with an asymmetrical toe. Um, Velcro lace up entirely your preference, whichever fits your foot better. But again, go and try the shoes on um, is very important and make sure they do fit well. And then perhaps start considering things like how long you're going to be in that shoe for. Is it going to be a shoe that you're going to be spending a lot of time on a, a multi-pitch route, for instance, or doing trad climbing? Then you might want a slightly not, not massively bigger than your foot, but a little bit more generous in size just to accommodate the, the foot swell that you're going to get over the course of the day. You don't want to end up with a, an agonizing shoe. Um, or are you going to go bouldering and go on to really super steep stuff, in which case you might need those downturn shoes, um, something with a more aggressive, aggressive toe or a stiffer, a stiffer shoe, stiffer sole to them. Well, I hope that's been a little bit helpful. Um, if you've got any questions about different types of shoes or oil or anything else to do with climbing, then do drop us um, a comment in the comments section below. Do remember to subscribe. Thank you very much if you have already subscribed. If you haven't, subscribe. Um, hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.